Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Amy. We do this almost every Friday morning at 8 o'clock central on Wise Monkey Quilting. And today we're going to be putting together a table runner. So what are you having for breakfast this morning? Good morning, Georgina, Marla, Linda, Tammy, two Tammies, Tammy with an IE and, a, and one with a Y. <laughs> good morning. Evelyn, good morning. So yeah, that's uh, Elizabeth checking in. Jan. Nobody's eating this morning. Nobody's eating this morning? Kathy is having uh, coffee and she's been waiting to make this runner. Good. Uh, Lori is in Colorado, so I'm assuming you're on vacation, so have fun, Lori. Oh, yep, I heard you were on vacation, Lori, <laughs> and Lori, this is the one that you wanted to make, so I'll show you how to do it. Linda's having peanut butter toast. Marla is bulletproof coffee. I'm not sure what that is. But... I think it sounds very strong. <laughs> uh, Beth, Beth Ann's having popcorn as always. Popcorn for breakfast. I have a brother-in-law that uh, uses popcorn as cereal and puts milk on it in the morning. Mm. Good morning, Karen. Uh, Georgina's having a bagel with chive, chives, ch cream cheese. Okay. Um, Lori says good morning at 6 a.m., yes. Oh yeah, you're a little ahead of us. Um, Angelina checking in down in Omaha. Elizabeth had a breakfast sandwich while on our way to Washington, D.C., so Oh, okay, great. very good. Uh, Martha's French toast and corn pops cereal. Um, Peggy says good morning from Maine. Lisa's got a bagel with blueberry cream cheese. Good morning, Sherry, with coffee and oatmeal. Amy is at Okaboji, imagine that. <laughs> they are having spud nuts is right across the road. Oh, Amy. Right across the road from the the very nice, generous people that are letting them stay at their place this week. So I hope you guys are having a good time. <laughs> um, Lori's excited to see the demo. Lisa, good morning. Uh, yeah, Linda, Amy will go through all that. She had problems with the seam going down the middle was too thick. Um, Mary's got coffee and lemon bundt cake. That sounds very good. Cindy is Greek yogurt and blueberries. Karen Cheerios. Everybody, when I said nobody was eating, they, they kind of responded here. They had to prove you're wrong. Angelina is Cheerios. Uh, Cindy Chex Mix with blueberries with the kids. Mm. Hi, Zeta. Uh, Steve's having a granola bar. Peggy is going for a walk with her dog, Louie. Um, Jan, Special K, a half a banana. Evelyn, <laughs> coffee now, watching in, watching it in the rain here in Northern Colorado. Okay. Well, send that rain this way. Yeah, we could use it. This next week, it's supposed to be in the 90s all week long here, and uh, not really much rain in sight. Ooh, Kathy says, hi from the hospital in Little Rock. Day trip to quilt shop didn't go so well. Well, oh, no. hope, hopefully you mend quickly, Kathy, and we wish you all the best. Oh. Um, Peg, good morning, and she's having a banana, and I'm caught up. Good. I had a strawberry cheesecake Greek yogurt this morning, so I am trying to be good and do a little healthy things in the morning. Although it's Crawford County Fair week, so Randy and I go out to the fair every day at noon and we bring back lunch to the girls. So yesterday was uh, Me Young's Chinese. So we had some sweet and sour chicken and some sesame chicken and that was very good. The day before we went to the Lutheran ladies booth and brought back maid rights and pie. So uh, at least I can eat good in the morning for breakfast when the rest of my other rest of my day goes south. So we'll see what happens. And I'm going to catch up on a couple more here. Um, looking forward to seeing it on YouTube. Yep, Susan Raisinbrand, Connie Coffee, heading to her grandson's baseball game. Victor uh, says hugs all around. Um, Gladys is excited watching with coffee. Evelyn says it's been raining here the last three days, and Marla says fair food is the best. Fair food is the best. All right. 
All right, so today I'm gonna show you how to make this braided twist table runner. And in here, you're going to get a template just like this. You might want to put the template behind, no, that does, it blends right in with that too. Um, you're gonna get a template just like this. Okay. And it's a really nice one that has all the markings on and I will show you how that's used. And in the book, you're, it's not just this table runner. You get patterns in here for if you want to do a small table runner, if you want to do a really large table runner, it's the exact same concept. And in the back here, you can do a table topper and all kinds of stuff. So it's not a one and done. It is, you can make it as long as you want. You can make it short. You can make it rounded, however you want to do it. Super fun way to do it. No quilting, no binding. When you're done, you're done. You can make them as gifts, make them for yourself, however you want to do it. So we're doing three things today. You can get the pattern. The pattern is, it's called braided twist, $29.90. Yes. Sold 100. And that gets you that template and your book for all of the uh, recipes in there, for all of the stuff in there. All the projects. All the projects you can make. Uh, we have three different fabric bundles. So I've done them in a couple, well, we've done them, by the time we end today, I'll do them in three colorways. So like I showed you last night, we have our Christmas. So with our Christmas, you are going to get the red and the green for the front of your table runner. You're going to get a Christmas fabric for the back of your table runner. And you're going to get a yard of fusible fleece. That's all you need to make the table runner we're making today. So you can do, these are $29.99 and includes everything. So you're getting two yards of fabric and a yard of fusible fleece. Um, to make the Christmas, so sold 101 Christmas. And those pack, packs are $29.99. Then look at this, isn't this cute? I did a Halloween one. So this is just some cute ghosts with some black. And then I just put the same ghosts on the back. So we have the, for that, so you're gonna get your ghost and your black for the front, and then the same ghost for your back, and your one yard of fusible fleece. So we got the Halloween. So that's sold 101 Halloween. And this morning we're gonna be doing one in fall. So you get this really pretty green and orange, which is gonna be the front, and then a cream, which is gonna be your back, and then the yard of fusible fleece. So that sold 101 fall. So you can get it in whatever season you want to do your table runner. And we'll go back through those. And then I wanted to bring along on the back of the template, I put on four of these true grips because you're going to want to have this where it doesn't slip. So I put on these true grips. They are how much? Four dollars and seventy-five cents. Four seventy-five. Sold space one hundred and two. And you get fifteen small and fifteen large in here, so you can put them on several of your templates or your rulers. Uh, they're that really nice grippy, and they stick really well. I'm encouraging you to put that on the back of your template. And uh, we've had a uh, recommendation from Peg that uh, she thinks school colors wink wink would be cute. <laughs> you could absolutely do this. So if you wanted to do it in Iowa State, you could do red and gold. You could do black and gold for Iowa. Whatever colors you have, these would be perfect in school colors. Absolutely. Even your high school teams, anything like that. Yes. 
All right, so we're going to go over. Do we have anybody else new joining us? And then we'll go over our components. Um, we do have a couple. Um, Bernie is checking in this morning. Uh, Debbie is checking in from Tucson. Or I, I'm sure it's nice and toasty down there this morning. Uh, Leslie, good morning. Uh, Betty Jean is checking in. Uh, Julie's watching from the Madison County Fair. Well, hello. And uh, Alan is also watching. Uh, PJ is watching from South Mississippi. And Kathy says hi. Hello. All right. So and, and Cindy K. Before I <laughs> get too far away. Okay. So. so basically, the instructions are really easy to follow. You're going to choose an A fabric for your top. And what I call the A fabric is your fabric that has your most design on it. So like on this one, I called my A fabric my uh, ghost. On my Christmas one, I called my A fabric the one that has the most designs, so the red. <clears throat> so I'm calling my green my A fabric, and then I'm going to call my orange my B fabric, and then they just call the backing fabric K. So the first things we're going to do is we're going to make, whoop, I only need one of these. We're going to make this end cap. So there's two end caps that you're going to be doing. And the first thing you do is it tells you what size to cut your pieces. This one is just a square. And then I'm going to take my template. And what is really cool is they have all of these lines right away on it. So if I lay my template like this with my A line and my A line measuring up on the sides of my square. I am just going to cut this nice gentle curve. I should have put on a new blade this morning. I can't cut as hard when I'm sitting down as I can when I'm standing up. So this is just scrap. We're going to throw that away. Oh, I'm just like Eleanor Burns. So here is my piece, and then we're going to go to our B piece, and it shows you pictures. I love this. Their instructions are pictures, shows you in the picture how to put your ruler on. You line up your B here on the side, and you line up your B over here on the side just like that and i'm going to cut along the inside of the circle let me make this a little bit easier for me just like that now that's a piece i can throw away or save it for a later i love being like eleanor burns i'll pick that stuff up later randy won't even know <laughs> So the only curved piecing that you need to do is this piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half and find the center of our curve. And I'm just going to give it a nice press. And then I'm going to fold this in half and find the center of our curve and give it a nice press. And I am just going to line up my two centers. I'm going to put a pin right there. Then I'm going to come up here and line up my edges. And this one I'm just going to put in on the edge, one of my clips. Line up my other edge. And put in a clip. Now when I go to sew this, I'm going to be sewing with my larger piece to the top and I'm going to start and I'm just going to work my way around and sew a quarter of an inch seam while Randy talks to you. All right, I'm going to come back up and uh, Mary's checking in from Kentucky. Debbie says it's nice now, but they've been hitting record highs. Yesterday it was 112. Um, good morning, Tris. Uh, Debbie says, and, and I was maybe going to make this comment, but I, I, I am not uh, 
maybe the one to critique, but she goes, uh, Debbie says, I ordered this from you when it first came out and I learned that using an 18 millimeter rotary cutter makes it easier to cut the curves. So, so yeah, so if you want to use a, a, a smaller rotary cutter. I happen to be using a 60 um, because that's what was on the table. So yes, yeah, so if you want to use a 18, uh, is it 25 or 28 is one. 45 uh, and a 45 so any of those would would probably be easier to use than than what the 60 is so so I'm just easing this around and just sewing my quarter of an inch as I go around my curve when I get to my pin I'm gonna pull my pin out before I sew it so I don't sew over my pin right Randy exactly Number one rule for uh, someone that fixes machines is don't sew over your pin. Good morning, Rita. And Amy is sewing on her Creative Icon 2 this morning. So if you're interested in any of the FOFS machines, please let us know. I'm going to take my last clip out as I sew my final little edge here. All right, so I that is the only curved sewing you do. It's a nice gentle curve. It's not hard to do. If you happen to come to the edge and it's not straight, it's okay. We're going to cut that off. And then you're going to press your seam to your smaller curved area. So I'm just going to press that. And also the the uh, um, the pressing mat that you're using is one that you can join together to make it whatever size you want. And you can find that right on our uh, comment sold store. We've had it on uh, or treat yourself Tuesday previously, so you can find it there. Yeah. All right. So I pressed it. Isn't that nice? Now my next step is I'm going to actually cut this. So I'm going to turn the page in my book to show how to lay it. So I'm just going to lay this wrong side up on my cutting mat. And then I'm going to take my template and it has on here place on curved stitches so right where i stitched on that curve that goes on my curved stitches and the edges of my template come down on the bottom of my piece good morning roxanne good morning rita so just like that i've got my curve on my my curve on my template on my stitching line i have the edges down at the bottom and i am just going to cut at the top of my template all the way around and it's again it's a nice gentle curve now here's my recommendation you go a little bit you lift up reposition go again as far as you can lift up reposition and then finish your curve and that is just extra so then you come up with like that so this is one half of that end cap now you're going to take this piece and another one of your a pieces to make your end cap and you're going to fold it over and you're going to find the center of your piece here. Put in a little pin. And then I line that up with the center of here, which happens to be my stitching line. So my stitching line to the center of that. I'm going to hook that together. Now, I only have to stitch from my stitching line down to the end of my curved piece. I'm not going to stitch this other piece because I will show you what we'll do later. 
So from that stitching line, and you want to going to tie a knot at the start and at the end. So I'm going to come over to my machine. I'm going to go right to that stitching line at a quarter inch. Now this machine has it where I can push a button and it'll tie a knot. We're going to tie a knot. And now I'm just going to sew my quarter inch seam all the way down to the bottom. So just like that. Just a second. I'll show you how to stitch that again. Oh, just a second. We forgot to cut our piece into a curve. Shirley's having zucchini muffins for breakfast. We're just going to take that little seam out. And then I'll do it again. Okay, so before we sew this on, we need to cut this at a curve. See, I'm not perfect even though Randy thinks I am. I'm going to lay my template on my other piece so the edges of my template are down on the bottom edge of my piece. And now I'm going to cut that curve out. All right, here we go. And we're going to do it the same way we did before. We're going to kind of reposition and continue cutting. There we go. Now we're going to do it again. So I have my piece with my center. I'm going to stitch it to this piece because we want it to be a circle. That's what we're doing. Same way. Now they should be the exact same size because we cut it with the template, which it is. So I'm going to start sewing again at where, we, where our stitch line is. And I'm going to go down this way a quarter inch. So. We just did that twice. That's okay. Um, Marla is wondering, what does tie a knot mean? Is it just stitch in place? Yeah, so you guys would either do a little tiny bit of a back stitch, or you could sew in place for a couple stitches and that's gonna tie your knot. Sandra says, wish that she had time to sew with you this morning. There but there's this thing called work, so oh, come, come back and watch us later, Sandra. Work always gets in the way of sewing. It would be a perfect world if we could just sew all day and not have to worry about any of that other stuff. Dishes, laundry, working. Good morning, Darrell. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. So I've done the circle, see how it's open on one end? But it's this way. Now I'm just going to come and I'm going to press this seam open. Just going to remind everybody on the fabric, uh, there we have three different uh, uh, fabric packs that uh, are all under the sold space 101. Um, so if you would like the Christmas, you can do sold space 101 Christmas. If you'd like the fall, do sold space 101 fall and uh, just put uh, Halloween at the end for the Halloween package. So where I opened it up and I pressed this open, I'm going to just take my little scissors and I am just going to clip right at that sewing line where I started and I'm going to clip that a quarter of an inch. So when I pressed my seam open, it actually folds and opens up. I'm gonna press that a little bit again. Okay. So there's my one half of the end cap. So now I just may have to make another end cap and the other part of the end cap is your background or your underneath your backing. So that's this cream that we're using for the for the back. So
so we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to sew two together halfway. So I'm going to fold this in half and find my center. Put a little pin. Right sides together. I'm going to put this one on. And another way you could do it is I'm going to fold my find my center crease it and then if you take a friction pen so a friction pen is the kind that once you iron it it's going to disappear I'm just going to put a little mark right at that center where I found my center now if I put my right sides together actually let me put my mark right on the other side Good morning, Tina, down in Louisiana. Um, Jan loves to see Amy have to rip, too. Um, <laughs> makes her feel better. Oh, well, good. I'm here for you. Um, Catherine is wondering about the block of the month. So those are in, in the works. Yeah. All right. So I found my center. I have them um, right sides together. I'm going to start here at my mark and sew a quarter inch down one side. So that's going to leave this other end open. So I'm just going to start at my mark and sew one side down a quarter of an inch. Um, Victor says he sews all day from when he wakes up, uh, takes some breaks for meals, and then time to learn them from um, some amazing individuals. Good. Um, that's why he ha has a husband to do the cleaning and laundry. Excellent. Um, Lisa says retirement helps too. Um, yeah, retirement helps. Having someone else to do that work for you works. And Sandra says, isn't it a bit early to have a date with Jack? Laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing right at that center point. I am just going to just clip that quarter of an inch up to my stitching line. So when I go press my seam open, can you see that? When I press my seam open, it just goes to where I clipped it. I'm just going to press that open. So now I have the one we did with our A and B and our one we did with our back, back fabric. I'm going to put these two pieces right side together and I'm going to sew from this edge all the way around to this edge. So what I do is first I'm going to match up my seam that I sewed. We'll put a little clip in and then we're going to come around and put a little clip about halfway and then up at the beginning put a little clip same thing on the other side we're going to come about halfway put a clip and then at the start and put a clip now we're going to sew our quarter inch all the way around and it's a nice gentle curve it's easy to do, trust me. I'm just gonna tie a little knot. And then I'm just gonna start to sew and follow the curve of the fabric. Now I do have a quarter inch foot on. So if your machine has a quarter inch foot, that is a great way to just keep sewing and going around that curve of the fabric. I'm just following the edge of my foot. Lois is wondering, when do you put interfacing in? We will do that in just a second.
reminder everybody, we're open tomorrow from 9 till 3. And uh, our otherwise our Monday through Friday hours are 9 till 5. So stop in and see us if you're in the area. We'd really appreciate that. All right, I'm almost done. I'm just doing my quarter inch seam all the way around. Letting my clips fall where they may. You know what? We forgot to mention that today is free shipping Friday. We did forget to mention free shipping Friday. That, has that been changed in our system? It has been. It is free shipping Friday. Evelyn just loves the sound of the FOF machine when it's going. <laughs> all right. We've sewn our quarter inch all the way around. It's all connected. Now, she asked about the interfacing, interfacing or the fusible fleece. So ahead of time, when you get your fusible fleece, you're gonna cut it to what it says in the pattern. And then, well, I'll just show you. Here's how you're gonna cut your fusible fleece. So I have one piece. I'm going to fold it and line it up so the fold is away from me. I have the bottom lined up. Then on the template, which is so cool, it actually says fleece and it has lines. So I'm going to line up my lines that actually say fleece, and then I'm going to cut around that curve, just like that, and there's my curved fleece pieces. So now I am going to take the piece that we just sewed, I lay one of these pieces on this side. Now what you're going to want to do is lay it right next to your stitching line, but not on it. So you want to see your stitching line all the way around. And if it's next to where you already sewed and pressed, just stick your fleece underneath that. Then you take another one. We're gonna lay it on this side the exact same way. So right next to the stitching line, but not covering it. And if it goes next to here, you're just gonna stick it under. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna press this fusible fleece on. So make sure when you're doing your fusible fleece, one side you can feel it, it's really rough. That's your side that's a fusible. The other side of your fusible fleece is softer and it's you can't feel anything. So make sure your fusible is down. You don't want to fuse it to your iron. And we're just going to take it to the iron and we're going to fuse that on. Now, another tip I have is I like to use my iron steam helps when you're doing fusible fleece. So if you have your steam on, that's really going to make your fleece stick good to your fabric. So put that steam on, and we're just going to press. Good morning, Margo. And uh, Kathy's wondering, do we have fusible fleece for sale today? We have it in the kit with the fabric. The fusible fleece is included with that, but we do not have it uh, individually. I'm not sure if it's in our comment sold store. If you want to buy just a fusible fleece individually, give us a call. 712-393-7979 and we can hook you up with some fusible fleece. We can get fleece. that put in your cart for you. All right, so I fused on the fusible fleece. Now I didn't do it to my back, I did it to the front. And I'm just going to reach in here now and turn it right side out. So we'll just stick that right side out. Just stick your hand in there. Uh, Get that all out. Susan, uh, the iron that we have here is a, a Singer iron. Um, that That's the brand that we use. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, and we do have some uh, Singer irons for sale. Mm -hmm. If you can go into comments sold, we just had them on on, on Tuesday. So, um, it's, all right. I've turned it in right side out. I've 
gone through. Now I'm just going to press that again around the outside edges. And I think we do have some of these irons on our comment sold store. We have them available in uh, white and pink, I believe is this what is they are. This is a different iron though. Yeah, we don't have these anymore. Okay. So. Okay, so there we go. So now we do have these raw edges, which is how we turned it right side out. We're just gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew our raw edge at an eighth of an inch. We're not gonna turn it in. We're not gonna turn it under. We're just going to sew it. Cause you're not gonna see this anyway. Cause when you put it together, this is going to be incorporated in your seam. So you won't notice. So I'm just gonna start at my center and I'm gonna sew an eighth of an inch on both edges. So I just slide it under my needle and I line up my fabric. And I start at the center and I'm just gonna sew an eighth of an inch down the edge. So yes, today is free shipping Friday. So if there's anything that you've been thinking about, now's the time to add it to your cart because you're not gonna pay shipping on any of it today. So no matter how large or small your order is, it is free shipping today. Okay, then I'm gonna do it to the other side. So I'm just gonna line up my fabric. Susan, the, the white and pink ones are also Singer irons. The one that we are sewing with uh, right here today, I don't believe is it, it's no longer in production. They have went to uh, um, one similar to it, but uh, um, the um, but the don't have this one, this actual model for for sale anymore. Okay. But we do have other models in store, um, so if you want uh, something else, we, you can certainly contact us here and we can go through everything that we have available. All right, so I got it right side out. I sewed an eighth of an inch down. You're not going to see this, so if you see a little bit of your back fabric in the front, it's not going to show anyway. We just closed the seams with an eighth inch. All right, so that's an end cap. Now, when we make the other portions, so you have to do that twice. There's two end caps, and then you're just making half pieces for here. Here's how we make the half piece. So I've already cut an A unit. This is my background or my backing. So I'm gonna do it the same way I did before. You know how you laid the template on there. I'm gonna just cut around that upper edge so I'm just going to follow the gentle curve and cut that piece off now after you make the two end caps the rest of it just goes together like this so I'm going to take my two pieces I'm going to put them right sides together they're the same size because you cut them with that template and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch all the way around the curve. Um, Sharon is wondering, do we have a kit for the quilt behind you, Amy? We can make you up a kit. It is just fat quarter bundles, background, and a pattern. All right, gentle curve. I'm just following my quarter inch with my quarter inch foot all the way around the gentle curve. Easy peasy, doesn't take much at all. Now you're going to do this um, depending on how long you're making your table runner. This one actually had, let me see if I remember, it actually had 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of these pieces. So I've sewn them right side together, all the way around the curve. I'm gonna take one of my fusible fleece on not the backing, but the front. I'm gonna lay my fusible fleece just like you did the other one. I'm laying it on here next to my stitching line, but not covering it, making sure there is a at least a quarter inch down here at the edge. I'm gonna press that on. And then we'll show you how to assemble the table runner. Because that's the fun parts, the amazing parts. The next time that we're going to be back with everyone will be Monday afternoon at 5 o'clock for Happy Hour with the Healy's. We do that every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Central. Um, otherwise, Tuesday night we will be here for Treat Yourself Tuesday at 7 o'clock Central Time. I pressed on, I'm just going to turn it right side out, run my hand in here to get it all pressed out nice. I'm just going to press my edges down. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew my eighth of an inch all the way down and close, close up where we turned it. So not turning it in, you're just gonna sew your raw edge, eighth of an inch, all the way down. And you're gonna do this with all six of the, do we call them curve pieces, pedal pieces, whatever you wanna call them. They're not the end caps, you're doing this for all the other ones. And we will be back next Friday for another edition of Breakfast with Amy also at 8 a.m. All right, so here we go. We have the end cap we just made. I had already made another one. So when you get ready to put it together, you have two end caps. You have your regular fabric on the one side, your backing fabric on the other. And then you have your different curves. So you have your B units with your background or backing, and you have your A units with your backing. So, and another thing, it's just really nice how she shows you in here. It's all pictures, easy to follow. She step-by-steps it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm gonna follow the picture I'm going to lay my end cap down. Can you see that in the thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, before we go, I'm just going to take my curve pieces. I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to make a little clip about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to make a little quarter of an inch clip. This is going to give you visual as to where it lines up. And then by your little clip, this is what's gonna make them go together and kind of lock in place. So on these four, and there's four, I said there was six, but there's only four. And I must've did it to these already. All right, so I got my end cap. Then it tells you your KB, which is this one, KB is going to lay B facing down and it goes right to that top where that center is. And then you know that the piece that you clipped is right there at the bottom edge. So I'm just gonna put a clip and another clip up here at the very top. Then our next one is a B, K, B facing up. This is gonna go right where that little piece is I clipped. We're gonna put a clip in. The bottom matches up the bottom of my curve to where I clipped. So I'm gonna clip that in place. Then we have our end cap. 
So their end cap facing down right at where I clipped. And then matching up the bottom where I clipped to the bottom, to the center of my end cap. Now I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch from this edge all the way down to this edge. So I'm just going to bring it into my machine and I'm going to sew that quarter inch. Just another reminder, free shipping Friday today, all day long, so you don't have to uh, uh, hurry up and check out. You have time to look through our uh, Comet Sold store and add things to your your order, and uh, um, then we will get things shipped out free of charge for you. And we always encourage questions if anybody has any. Um, but, Are they uh, intently watching me? I, I think most of the questions have been asked already. So. Okay. So I am just sewing my quarter inch straight down that hidden seam. Taking my clips out as I get there. Can I tie a little knot at the end? Audrey, yes, we do have a free app. So you can either go on your... Um, Apple Store or the Android um, Store and uh, you can download that and you can watch any of our shows right directly from that. All right, so now we have the one side down. We're going to do the other side. Now this one's going to go instead of over top, it's going to go under. So we have our end cap. Now we do the KA. This is our A side, A facing down. So we just want to put this up on top. We're going to line up the top with the edge of the center of that square, the circle, square. I know my squares from my circles. This goes right down to that piece I clipped. Now we're going to do our next piece, A, K, with A facing up. Underneath here, we line that up with that little snip we put in. This lines up perfectly with that snip on the second one. And then we're down to our end cap. This goes over top of our end cap, matching that bottom. and matching the top to that little clip, piece I clipped. So right there. Susan's wondering, do we carol, carry wood, wool batting? We do not. I'm gonna go to my machine and now I'm gonna sew a quarter inch all the way down this edge. Marla says have a lovely weekend. She's off to babysit three, uh, babysit three pit bulls as a, oh. a as a birthday present. So. Oh my, well good luck. Have fun. Okay, so I'm gonna start right at the top. And I'm gonna sew a quarter inch all the way down. And we are almost done. All we have to do is flip. And we certainly uh, want to wish every one of you a happy weekend have fun do do something fun if that's sewing or if that's uh doing something with the grandkids the kids get out and enjoy yourselves okay just doing our quarter inch all the way down Almost there. All the way down to the end. I'm just going to tie a little knot. Cut it. 
and all we have to do is flip. So what we want to in the end is have all of our white facing one way and all of our color facing the other. So if we flip and we flip and we flip, look at that all of our backing is facing one way and when we flip it over all of our color is facing the other way it's like magic then you just kind of reposition it hide those seams line up your line it all up now there's two ways you can do it i'm just going to hide that seam in there Kind of lock it into place. Now you'll want to take it, press it. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can just leave it like this, which is fine. Or you can always put some uh, adhesive on the back. You could put some double stick um, like um, heat and bond or uh, seam, steam a seam. You can put that on the back so that it doesn't unravel. You can also, once you have it all lined up, you can do a running stitch just all the way up the center. That will hold it in place. So however you want to do it. So here is our fall one we just made in less than an hour. Here was the Christmas one. And here is the Halloween one. So we have the pattern, which includes your template, and it's the book, Perfect Picture Illustrations, walks you through it. 29, 29.90. 29.90 gets you the braided twist. Then we have the three different packets. So if you want the Halloween, it's sold 101 Halloween. You're gonna get uh, half a yard of the front and a yard of the back plus a yard of uh, fusible fleece. If you like the Christmas, you can do sold 101 Christmas. You're going to get the two Christmas fabrics in the front, your Christmas fabric for the back, and your fusible fleece. And if you like the fall, you're going to get half a yard of the front, you're going to get this cream for the back, usable fleece. So everything you need to actually complete this, there's no more to do. You don't quilt it, you don't bind it, it's done. And then I recommend the True Grips, which is what I put on the back of the template so it doesn't slip when you're cutting your fabric. These are $4.75, right Randy? They are four dollars and seventy-five cents. Yes. Sold one oh three. One oh two. Oh, was I right on this? So one oh one Halloween, one oh one fall, one oh one Christmas, and mm -hmm. these are sold one oh two. Yes. Okay. Any uh, other questions for me? Yes, Sandra. She's got a couple of sure. outdoor Christmas parties in the heat. That's not a, a question. Um, Carolyn is wondering where we are located. We are in Denison, Iowa, which is in western Iowa. We are about an hour and a half northeast of Omaha. We're about two hours northwest, northwest of, Des of Des Moines. So yes, so yeah. if you're ever in the area, please stop in and see us. We, we really appreciate that when we can put uh, faces to the names that uh, we, we see almost every day on, on this show and the other uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, show as we do so uh, let's see here Becky says she couldn't believe it was going to work that's really cool <laughs> it's magic when you get down to the end and you just flip 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 so yes and if you if you can use it with several colors if you're team color yeah um, it's ver it's so um, versatile that you can use it and there is even a pattern in the book where you can make it reversible. So now you've made it fall on one side, you could do Halloween on the other. Mm -hmm. 
super easy to do it that way too. But this was her very first one. Once you've done this and you have it, have it down, you can do any other one in the book however you want to do it. Betty Jean says embroider Mer Merry Christmas on them or oh, other sure. things like that. You could you could sew this piece on, do a decorative stitch around the edge. There's all kinds of ways you could um, make it your own and have it look however you want. Yes, Carolyn, Carolyn's in West Des Moines. Yes, it, it, it's not all that long of a road trip. Uh, no. um, West Des Moines to here is, is probably right about two hours, so so it, it's not a bad trip at all. And if you are, would like, we do have a retreat center right next door. So you and nine of your friends can come and, and stay with us for a while. Gather up your friends. Anywhere from two to ten people can stay for as long as you want. Um, Debbie says, I wish she would do a tutorial on the round centerpiece. Oh, okay. That uh, could be something in the future, Debbie. Yeah. But uh, we always are, are looking for ideas for, for this. So yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions right now. All right. Remember, it is free shipping Friday. So that if there's anything you've been on the fence about or wondering about, now is a great time to go back into our Common Sold store and pick that up. And uh, other than that, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in to Breakfast with Amy. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I, I hope that you'll make something very pretty for yourself. Take care.